Well, hi there. I said I would show you um, our, uh, you know, the making of jobs and how we go about doing it and how we make things wrong and make them right again, or try to make them right first time, eh? Um, this is not obvious what this is um, off the bat, but there's three of them. And there's one there. There you go. Um, and you can see there's uh, some SBR rail on there. Um, it's on, will be on all three of those uprights. Okay, and the end result is going to be something like that. And what this is for is so a customer can uh, build their own um, solar panel boards. So there'll be the inverter, the MPT, uh, MPPT, um, and a few other bits and pieces on there. And some of these things can be, you know, upwards of four or 500 kilos. So it's worth, uh, you know, putting a little bit of effort into it because you can't afford to have this go wrong. Uh, so we've got, um, we went the winch route. Uh, it was the only safe way to control the ascent and descent of the, of the load. Uh, as you can see, we've put the rails on here. There we go. And we put three on for, um, <laughs> for the hell of it really. Because it's so heavy, we just want to make sure that it, it does its job. Uh, we've got a double winch set up going. Let me go around the other side because of the sun. And yes, we've got sun in the UK. Um, so there we go. So it hooks onto there, goes up over that pulley, down, and as you can see through that pulley there, which gives it a double lift. So a 250 kilo winch becomes capable of a 500 kilo winch, although slower. All right, so that's how it's done. Um, we've built a box for all to all sit in, and we've um, we've hacked the product uh, so that it works. And what I mean by that is that we have got some professional um, Arduino PLCs in there. We got a 12 volt power supply, 24 volt power supply, 240 isolator, and some connectors for all the sensors. Uh, this is a part finished product. It's not um, ready to go out the door yet, uh, but we've got a hand control here with emergency stop and then up and down. So there's the, and you'll see that it stops on the, there we go. So you can see that it stopped on the sensor. Um, and then you can see that it's gonna be easier for the customer and their guys to get 500 kilos off from that height than it would be as a, at the moment they're building them on the on the desk uh, and then we can go to the top can't really see but you can see it's going up yeah until we get to the sensor at the top and sensor at the top's lit and it stops really really straightforward um, you can see also that it gives them the chance, if we look down, to stand really close to the board and to do whatever they've got to do here on the boards, installing everything. So it's quite a neat little, uh, very neat little product. Uh, and like I say, we've got three of them to build. Now, when it comes to errors and making things a little bit wrong and just being a little bit, uh, you know, we could have done better sort of thing. <laughs> Uh, there's, we've had to put little packer washers on just to keep the motor off that middle bar. We should never have put that middle bar in. We should have just used those two and mount the motors on. We couldn't get the motors in time to do that or the winches in time to do that. So we guessed and we guessed wrong. So that's what happens when you guess, you guess wrong. Uh, those stops at the top, these, one of my, one of my guys said, yeah, they'll be fine. Um, a half ton winch will just rip those clean off <laughs> so, so so we're gonna go you see the bottom we've got these angled stops there yeah that's what's going on the top as well bolt in ones um, and you'll never push those off not with 500 kilos anyway the winch will stop way before then I'll show you in a video in a minute um, or you know I'll add it to the end of um, the programming logic behind this uh, also there's something else that's involved in this now is um, there has to be a safety latch so we're going to put a safety solenoid in here somewhere uh, maybe at the bottom uh, so that when it's up and they're building the boards there's absolutely no chance of it dropping 
so it's going to be two solenoids, one either side. They're little lock solenoids. They're, I'm not even sure the ones we got are strong enough, but this is what I'm saying about let me show you how we do it, and then you'll have some idea of what not to do if you build something like this yourself. <laughs> so let me make the mistakes, and then you can get all the price. Uh, so that's where we are with it. That is the product as it stands. It's got to be finished, got to be painted, got to get the solenoids on. Um, but I'd like to show you the ladder logic to this. These PLCs, uh, these Arduino PLCs, um, they really do kick ass as far as using an Arduino, you know, hobby board is concerned. You know, they take, they take 12 volts, 24 volts. Um, they're just a neat little thing. They're just a neat thing. Um, not too many inputs and outputs, to be fair, but the inputs are digital 24 volts or analog, whatever you want them. Um, and the outputs, as you can see in there, are actually relays so you can pretty much fire anything on that you could fire contactors off of that um, i'm actually firing 240 volts off it because it works so in a little while uh, we'll go to my office and we will show you how we do the other bits and pieces and show you just how simple the programming logic is as opposed to writing the code in an arduino hobby board um, i'll give you a clue there's about 10 hours difference so at least you'll have some idea there but uh, i'll keep you up to date if we you know if we do something that uh, ends up being wrong we've shown the client um this one working uh he's over the moon he thinks it's fabulous his guys are going oh my back's not going to hurt anymore won't be to have any more time off work that kind of thing so they're disappointed but he's happy and that's the main thing uh yep that's it so it's three of them they will be built by the tail end of next week or middle of next week then we strip them all down and then we uh, paint them and then we build them back up again and then deliver them. Uh, we've got to put some anchor points down in the corners, that corner and that corner, maybe even one in the middle there somewhere. Uh, but that is, that's the job as it stands. Uh, I'll show you how the solenoid works and show you some clever stuff with PLCs and just show you how simple it is. There's a, there always seems to be this kind of perception that PLC work is a black art. It really, really isn't. Um, yeah, it's a little, you've got to be, have a sort of a logical mind and you, it works logically, but you haven't got to be any genius. Um, believe you me, uh, if I can do it, pretty much anybody can. So I'll leave it here for now and I'll take you over to the PC shortly. Bye. Hi there. Well, here we are. We're um, just at my, uh, laptop now. Um, I just wanted to show you, uh, this is the second board being built now. Um, still got the same Opta PLC, um, except that is going to be, well, we'll use a bigger one because there's only a little uh, baby one. Um, but we're going to be using the solenoid there to lock the, um, the carriage on the lift up um, so that when it hits the uh, stop or the, the sensor, the limit switch, uh, it will automatically trigger this and then as it comes off the limit switch, um, it will then retract this plunger so that the lift can go down. That's the plan. So what we've got here is that, um, I know it's an Arduino and this is open PLC, but Arduino PLC or the PLC IDE, um, it's just so buggy. Uh, it's, it's, it's not great. I'm having lots of conversations with people at Arduino, the tech support, they've been as helpful as they can, but some of the Optus connects, some don't. It's, it's just a little bit of a mess if I'm quite honest. Um, maybe I'll do a review on it one of these days, but yeah, for now I'd leave the uh, Arduino IDE uh, alone. <laughs> and not the actual uh, board IDE, you know, the little hobby board. Um, but as far as Arduino PLC is concerned, it's not really there yet. You just want to plug these things in and go, right? Um, so there we go. So this is a really, really simple program to do what is effectively a simple thing. The idea is uh, you press a button, it goes up, hits a limit switch, it stops. Uh, when the limit switch is triggered, the um, solenoid plunger goes in and puts the uh, the lifting frame into a safe state. So that if there's any failure, once it's up, we're not going to be dropping 500 kilos on somebody's feet or on their head. Um, some people deserve it, but most don't. So that's the idea of the uh, of the solenoid plungers. Um, I'm going to need to find some pretty big ones or some hefty ones to hold up 500 kilos, but that's my problem, not yours. So. <clears throat> So what I'm going to do is 
show you the very, very simple steps, and I've actually got it in uh, debug mode, which should help us, you know, help me show you what we're doing. So if we take the first line of the ladder logic there, which is the limit up and R up. So limit up is the limit switch, R up is the um, it's a solenoid, um, uh, sorry, the relay on the Arduino Opta. Uh, when that triggers, that breaks the circuit for the motor as it goes down, uh, sorry, as it goes up. So that's just a little, um, uh, so it's, it's very, very simple. So you press the button, the motor goes, the lift goes up, hits the, um, hits the limit, and then once it hits the limit, it triggers the, uh, it triggers the, the solenoid to act so what we can do is that we can right click on this and we can force it through and you can see that green line goes on and the uh, relay on the board you probably heard it click and then we can go in there and we can set it to false okay so that's that's the limit up and we got exactly the same for the down now to make the solenoid work we've got to be a little bit clever so when it goes up we need to let it let the motor stop so there's a little uh, timer on there uh, which is set to two seconds so it waits two seconds uh, on this timer counting up timer and then there's a little latch here that then latches the lock on which fires another relay on the board which fires the plunger of the solenoid out and puts it into safe mode now the trick with this is that the latch has got a reset as you can see right there now that reset gets triggered when you push it high so what we do is that we can move the, the lifting frame down off the stop. And the minute it comes off the stop, it triggers a falling edge. Sorry, my arms are aching. It triggers a falling edge uh, contact signal. Yeah. Um, and then that signal resets this, which then unlatches the lock and the lock pops back in. So if we look at that, you will see now I'm going to trigger the, uh, I'm going to pretend to trigger the, uh, the limit switch on. So we force it to true. It waits a second and then that goes in. The minute we set the uh, limit to false, so it comes off it, then it retracts. So that's the idea. Um, so all of that is in there. Uh, you've got uh, let me just point this out. So you've got the 240 volt isolator, you've got 24 volt, we've got 12 volt supply. I'll explain that in a minute, that may not be needed. Um, and we've got the Arduino Opta. Um, and then down here, this is just a whole bunch of connections with 24 volt, 12 volt, and the uh, any sensors we want to hook up to the sensor side of the Opta, which is there, as you can see. And that little bit there is for RS485 which ought to be quite nice to use at some point, but not in this project. So that is the long and the short of it. It is an incredibly simple ladder logic sketch that doesn't require anything more than that. It, it works. Uh, I, haven't got the, uh, I haven't got the big ones of these in yet, because uh, these are only little tiny ones, like these 24 volt and they draw 0 0.015 amps, so they're not strong. In fact, you know, a, uh, you know, an ant that's been in the gym for a day or two will stop that going out, so that's not really ideal. So there we go. That's it. I thought I'd just show you this. Like I say, I would stick to open PLC for this type of work. The Arduino PLC IDE, I will say it again and again, it's not really there. You know, you want something that just works. You know, we just, we pull the COM port out, you know, of the Opta. We stick it in here and it just does it. You write your ladder logic and it just does it. And you can see, I mean, this is not a very, <laughs> not a very technically advanced program. It doesn't need to be. It just needs to do what it's told um, and it needs to do it in an automated way. And of course, PLC for industrial automation is the way forward. So I thought I would dive into that. And I have to say, I really do quite like it. Um, what I don't like is the fact that the software that you're meant to use with this is pretty pants. I'll say it again and again and again until somebody can show me that all you have to do with this is plug it in, is plug in your serial, fire up, opt you know, sorry, the, um, 
the Arduino PLC IDE, the so-called professional IDE, uh, and it works. If they show me that happening first time on, you know, three or four of these devices, because I've got another one there for the third board, that one will work with the Arduino PLC. That one won't. They've both been flashed with exactly the same firmware, exactly the same formatting. That one works. That one doesn't. And nor does the one way down there somewhere. So, yeah, so the one thing that does work is Open PLC works every time without any bother at all. So there you have it. I mean, you know, I'm not the world's best um, wiring engineer, as you can see. Uh, I, I never profess to be. I'm a welder, but you know, this isn't. This looks rough because it's uh, halfway through a build, but it will look better as it gets older. A little bit like me. Anyway, there we go. If you like the video, please subscribe. Um, you know, hit the like button. It helps. It helps me to get noticed on YouTube a bit, and hopefully, I can help you. You got any questions about this, or if you need a bit of help or something um, that I can help you with, I will. I'm a complete novice at this, so you know, if that's all wrong, tell me why it's wrong. I'd love to know. Uh, but it is relatively simple. Uh, there is a couple of things I could do with explaining um, with this, but I think it's going to have to wait for another day because it's late on a Friday. It's very, very hot. I've had to turn the fan off so that I can make this part of the video. Um, and I am sweating profusely. Uh, I'm sure you want to know that. So there we go. Um, I will explain the way in which I've wired the motors when I build this board out completely. And I'll explain why the ladder logic is so simple. Uh, because I've kind of hacked the winch a bit. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll do another video, a little follow up, um, to show you what this is all about. Or what that's all about. I've showed you what this is all about. Uh, so, you know, like I say, please subscribe. Um, comments. Love comments. I've... You will see if you look through my comment list, I answer as soon as possible. Very few comments get past me. Um, if you've got questions, ask and I'll do my best. I'm very much a uh, build it from my head and do a drawing later um, sort of person, if that's the case. I tend to do things on the fly. I'm a little bit um, manic like that. I just think, oh, that's a good idea, let's do it. Uh, and I try to finish as many of them as I can. Uh, but we're always building stuff. The saw stop works brilliantly now. I do need to make a, a video on that because that was a very interesting workaround before this. And to be honest with you, if I'd known about this for the price, I wouldn't have built the saw stop the way I built the saw stop. All right, so we'll, we'll go into that another day. Anyway, very, very hot here. Um, it's one o'clock easily. It's seven minutes past five here in the UK. It's one o'clock. I'm going, I've got a cold one. I can hear it calling me from the fridge now. So you take care. I'll see you on the next one and have fun. Let me know if you want any information. Bye.